I get it. React has gotten really complex. As a React developer, sometimes I look over at a framework like Svelte, and I'm like, oh, that looks just remarkably easy and fun. But I've got this big React app. Can I use Svelte in that application? Well, actually, you can. And it's remarkably easy. So easy that I'm going to have time to show you not just how to do it, but also how to share CSS, pass properties, share a global management store using Zustand. We're even going to create a generic function that will make it super easy for you to put Svelte components in your React app. Let's get right into it. We're going to start all the way from the beginning on this one. We are going to use PMPM to create a Vite application. We'll call it Svelte Inside React. And to start, we're going to use the React template. I'll bring it up in VS Code, and then bring up the terminal, do PMPM I to install it, and then just use PMPM Dev to bring it up. There you go. We have our React app up and running. Let's now go back over to VS Code and close up the terminal. Now I'm just going to pare this example down a little bit. We'll take out all the CSS. Now over in the React app, I'm going to pare this down to just its essentials. We don't really need all of this extra HTML here. I'll just keep around the button because we're going to use that. OK, let's see what a pared down app looks like. Fantastic. Well, it looks like it's pretty good here. Let's see, we have our button. Now I want to bring in Svelte and see how to integrate that into our React app. So first thing I want to do is bring up our terminal again, and I want to install the Vite plugin for Svelte. And I'm going to use dash D to bring it in in development mode. We don't need it in production. Now, of course, we need Svelte, so I need to bring that in as well. Now we need to configure it. And this is the tricky bit. Let's go over to Vite config and let's bring in our plugin for Svelte. And this is really difficult. We're going to run the Svelte plugin. And that's it. Let's uh, pmpm dev and see if it works. And there we go. So it's still running, which is great. Now we have both frameworks available to us, but we're not actually using Svelte yet. So let's go and create our first. Svelte component. Let's close down a few of these windows. And now I'm going to create our first component. So I'll call that hello.svelte. All right, let's go over to our app.jsx. And then we're going to import that. And this is actually where it starts to get a little bit tricky. What we need to do first is define an element where we're going to mount that Svelte component. So let's create a div for that. And then we need a reference to that HTML component. So for that, we're going to use use ref. And we'll call this svelte ref. And then we'll assign that ref to that div using ref. Now, in this case, svelte ref current is going to be a reference to that HTML div element. But that's not going to be the case until we have mounted the app. So what we need to do is wait for that to happen. Now, to do that, I'm going to use use layout effect. So we'll use that. And I'll give it a function. And this function is going to get called directly after the application is mounted. So what we can do is we can now is just say that we want to create a hello component. And then we give it a target, which would be the Svelte ref current that we just created. Let's try it out. And there you have it. Hello from Svelte. So now our Svelte application is running inside of our React application, which is great, but it's showing up twice. So why is that? Well, the issue is over here in main.jsx. We are in strict mode. And in React 18, in strict mode, in dev mode, you get mounted, unmounted, and remounted every time. So what that means is this use layout effect is run twice. And new hello, in this case, that's targeting Svelte Ref Current is just appending itself to that div. It's not replacing the contents of it. So what we need to do is we need to clean out the contents from the last run so that we are capable of being mounted, unmounted, and remounted cleanly. Easiest way to do that is just to iterate around the children. So we get the first child, and we say, well, if there's a first child, we remove it, and then we continuously do that until there are no more children left. Let's hit Save and see how it goes. 
And now we just have the one, hello from Svelte. Okay, so this is a good start, but we want a complete solution. We want CSS, we want properties, we want potentially global state management. How do we do all that? Well, it starts with CSS, and for that, we'll use Tailwind. So again, I'll bring up the terminal, and then I'll do pmpm -pm add, and we'll add all of the Tailwind stuff. It starts with auto prefixer, post CSS, Tailwind CSS, of course. And I'm also going to bring in Daisy UI, which is a UI framework that's built on top of Tailwind. That's because I really just don't want to write out all of the Tailwind for things like buttons. Plus, it looks good. And I'll do all that in development mode. Now we need a Tailwind configuration. So let me go and add a Tailwind configuration file. And I'll just bring in a config. This is the stock React Tailwind configuration plus Daisy UI. But I've also added Svelte to the list of extensions because we want to look at any .svelte file to see if it's using any of the Tailwind classes. Next thing we need to do is create a post CSS config. So let's go create that. And really, this is just going to be Tailwind CSS and auto prefixer. And then finally, we need to bring in the Tailwind CSS. So I'll bring that into index.css so that it's global. And let's try it out. And there you go. We have a kind of button that's really doing nothing, but it is all in Tailwind, which is awesome. So let's go and try it that out over in our React code. And to do that, we can just add a class to button for button. And we can make it like a success button. And now we have a good looking button. Now let's see if it works over in Svelte. Go back over to our hello.svelte, and we'll just use class and then give it some big text. It's bolded. And there we go. Now we have shared CSS through Tailwind between React and Svelte. Now the next thing we should cover is how to send properties to our Svelte component. And I think that starts with how to define properties in Svelte. So the way that we do that is we bring in a script tag. And then to define a property, really all I have to do is export a let variable. In this case, we'll say it's extra text and give it a value. And how do we put it in there? Well, we'll just do extra text, just like that, just like you would in React. Now, let's see what that looks like over in the browser. And we can see that we have default text. But if we go over here to app.jsx, and then down in our new hello, we specify props. And we specify extra text. Now we have a property going to our Svelte component. And we can even use this for callbacks. So let's try that. So now we're sending this on click event. And if I click on anything, what I expect to see is an alert pop up where it says, I got a click from Svelte. So let's go over to Svelte. And of course, we're not expecting it. So we need to expect it. And we'll give it a default function. And in Svelte, to respond to a, an event, you say first on. And then you give it the event you're looking for. So in this case, it would be click. And what do we do? Well, we just pass it our onClick handler. Now when we click, we got a click from Svelte. How cool is that? So how do we make this even easier? How do we make it generic so we can do this for any Svelte component? What we can do is we can create a Svelte wrapper function. And its job is to take a Svelte component, in this case, hello, and we return a React component. And that React component takes properties and then does all of this use layout effect and use ref work to mount and then pass properties to our Svelte component. So let's return our React component. And we can just go ahead and take a lot of this code. So I'm going to go and grab all of this code down here. Next thing to do is change out this hello for component because we want this Svelte wrapper to be generic. So now whatever component you send in to Svelte wrapper is going to be wrapped by the React component, and automatically all of the ref and layout effect stuff is going to happen for you. Now for properties, all we need to do is just send in whatever we got for properties. And finally, we need to render something. So let's go and just copy out this div down here and return that. Looks pretty good. So let's use this thing to wrap our hello component. So we give it hello, and we get back our Svelte hello. Svelte hello is our React component that wraps the Svelte component. Now let's use it by just 
invoking it just like we would any other React component. Hit save. And now we get our default values, which is fine. So let's go and add in those properties. So there we go. That's a pretty decent one. And for the on click, let's go and just send the same set count so that when we click it, we update our count with one. Okay, cool. So now we get our text from React. And if I click on it, then the count goes up by one. If I click on the button, the count also goes up by one. So now we have a generic function that takes any Svelte component, passes it the props that we want, and integrates it into our React application just like that. So I don't think you would even know if you got one of these Svelte hellos that it was actually Svelte underneath the hood. So the last thing I want us to look at is how to do shared global state between these two. And for that, I'm going to use Daishi Kato's Tsushtan library. So let's go over into our console and add that in. All right, let's bring up our app again. And let's start by defining our store. And let's bring in the create function from Tsushtan. What create does, it creates a global React hook. So with that, we are going to create our counter. And we're going to replace our use state counter with this global state counter. So what we've done is we've said create. Create takes a function, which gets given a setter, and then it returns an object. So in this case, the object has a count that starts at zero, and then we give also back an increment function where we set the state to the state count plus one. Let's export that as the default. And then we'll first bring that into our app.jsx and replace our existing use state with our new global state. All right, so down here, we're going to use use store instead. And that's going to give us back count and increment. And the only change we need to make is instead of set count, we just use increment. Okay, let's try this out. All right, looks good, looks as you would expect. Of course, the only thing that we aren't looking at here is how to integrate this into our Svelte application. Right now, we're just passing it as props. What we need to do is make our store Svelte compatible. So how do we do that? Well, let's go back over into store. And what we want to do is we want to create a readable Svelte store. So we bring in readable from Svelte store. So let's invoke readable. And we're going to export that as our counter. The first argument to readable is the initial state. To do that, we use get state from use store. And then the next function is an initialization function, and it takes a setter. So what we're going to do is we're going to subscribe to our store. And when it fires, we're going to call set. Let's see if this works. To do that, I'm going to go create the equivalent of the counter, but I'm going to do it in Svelte. And I'll start by bringing in our counter. And then I'll create a button where onClick calls that increment function that we get from the store. And then we just display the count. and we put Svelte on there just so we know it's Svelte. Now let's go back over into our app.jsx, and we'll bring in our counter. And then we'll create a Svelte counter, and we'll put it at the end. And let's take a look. Does it work? How cool is that? That is crazy cool. Oh my gosh. So now we've got shared state running between our React application, and our Svelte application. That, to me, is a complete solution. We've got the integration of Svelte components. We've got CSS. We've got properties. We've even got global state management. But how much are we paying for all this? How much does the Svelte code add to our React code? Well, to find that out, let's start by building our existing application. And we can see that it's 151 kilobytes. Now let's go and remove all of our Svelte code. So now we have just the React and the Sushan stuff. And the number that we are currently working with is 151 kilobytes for the version with Svelte. So let's see how much it is without the Svelte stuff. So we'll do another PMPM PM build. And that clocks in at 147K, which means that we paid a grand total of 4K for our Svelte components, which is pretty amazing. Why is it so much smaller? Why is Svelte 
Svelte. The big difference is in when the work of the framework is done. With React, we have a VDOM. It's a runtime framework. So we need to send the entire React library, including all of the virtual DOM or VDOM manipulation code, all the way to the client so that it can manage the DOM at runtime. Svelte is entirely different. All of the work is done at compile time. It looks through your code. It sees the elements that you create. It creates the JavaScript code to build those elements. And then it specifically targets the event handlers that you want and writes the JavaScript that is essentially vanilla JavaScript for you. It's the same sort of thing with SolidJS. That's why these applications are not just smaller, they are actually much more performant since you don't have to manage an entire copy of the DOM in the JavaScript space like you do with React. Of course, all this code is available to you on GitHub for free and a link in the description right down below. I love how easy it is to integrate different technologies into an application using something like Vite. And I gotta say, it's not just Vite that's part of this, it's also the framework. I was having a conversation with some Angular folks just recently, and the sum total of it was you either buy into Angular or you don't, and that's it. And I just don't think that's tenable in this world. There are lots of existing applications out there. There's huge code bases. What are you going to do about those? Most folks don't work on greenfield applications. Most folks don't get the opportunity to just say, hey, I'm just going to pick up and build something else, something else for a job. You need to have frameworks that are integratable in other apps and that you can consume in small pieces, like Svelte in this case. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get something out of it. I hope you try it out. Honestly, I think it's really cool. I really love Svelte and I think it's great. And I think it's awesome to see Svelte and React working together in the same app. Of course, if you like the video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and you'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.